There's a new Data for Progress poll on COVID-19. Um, and I think that this says a lot. Which position do you support? Automatically increase spending whenever there is an ongoing deepening recession. Or don't automatically increase spending when there's a recession. 65% support automatically increasing spending whenever there's a deepening recession. Only 35% are against that. So, just so everybody understands, this fact alone flies directly in the face of conservative economics. Because conservative economics, they're, they're supposed to, at least in theory, prioritize debt and deficits above other concerns like jobs. So, and the idea is, oh, if, you, if the government starts spending money willy-nilly when we get into um, a recession or a depression... Well, the government can't afford that. We don't have the means to be able to do that. And it'll actually exacerbate the problem in the long run because what you do is you reinflate the bubble. And it's like fake spending. It's not real spending. And in a lot of conservative circles, like libertarian economists will tell you, oh, the recession isn't the problem. The recession is the cure. The recession is the cure because there's a lot of malinvestment in the economy and it, we got to let air out of the bubble. The bubble's got to burst. That's what has to happen. This is what a lot of conservative economists will tell you. Um, but what you see here is, at least according to the people, and the economists will say, I don't care what the people think. Okay, fair enough. But 65% of people do say, no, no, no. If we're in a recession or a depression, you want to increase. Automatically, they're saying increase spending. Now, even though I just went through that whole spiel about how, you know, libertarian economists will tell you, or Austrian economists will tell you, don't deficit spend like that. What's interesting is that when people get in power, everybody's either a Keynesian or a believer in what's called modern monetary theory. And that's the idea that, well, listen, we have our own sovereign currency. And so, yes, we have the ability to pick up spending whenever necessary to look after the economy. If you control your own currency, if you have a sovereign currency, of course you could deficit spend when times get rough. And of course it's going to work. So, you know, that's the approach when people are actually in power. This is the left-wing position, but then also you see with Republicans, when they're in power and things go south, what do they do? We saw what they did. They sat back, they were totally cool with the Fed pumping a trillion dollars of liquidity into the marketplace every day. Every day, they were doing that. They did the giant multi-trillion dollar bailout bills. Now, the difference is, you know, the current Republican Party and Democratic Party, where do they like to put the spending first and foremost? They like to do it directly to corporations. They like to $5 trillion bailout of corporations, crumbs to the people, trillions of dollars to the corporations and to the wealthy. And that's why, you know, we have this term that I say, Bernie says it all the time as well, this idea of corporate socialism. That our government's fine with socialism, but they only want socialism for the rich. And then as uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, rugged individualism and capitalism for the poor and, and the middle class, even the working class. Um, so, but I find that fascinating. 65% of the public says, hey, when, we're, when times get rough, damn right the government better be the spender of last resort to make sure the economy doesn't get worse. Because if they do nothing, history shows, oh yeah, you exacerbate the problem, you exacerbate the recession, you exacerbate the depression, and everybody's screwed. So the spending is necessary. There's just a debate as to how you do the spending, where you do the spending. Obviously, I would contend the way that we're doing the spending now, you know, propping up the stock market, giving money to corporations and the wealthy. No, no, I don't do that. I believe more in socialism for the people, not socialism for the wealthy. Um, so I would do more of a bailout of the people. And that's where I think the money should be focused. But bottom line is, the people are saying, oh, definitely spend when, when the going gets tough. Now, this is from last month, but I think it's totally relevant. Nationally, a majority of the public see one-time payments of $2,000 as insufficient. 66% prefers recurring payments of $2,000 until a year after the president declares an end to the federal state of emergency. A majority of Republicans, 52%, also agrees with this view. Now, there was another morning consult poll that found that 67% of the country wants more stimulus. So we're in the same ballpark with everything here. 65, 66, 67%. To be specific with UBI, 66%. Say, yeah, give me $2,000 every month 
until the crisis is over and actually until a year after the crisis is over. I need $2,000 a month. This is what we're talking about. That would be a true bailout of the people. That's what that would be. And what we're seeing is overwhelming support in the country, again, 66%. But we're also seeing 52% of Republicans are like, yeah, who are we kidding? We got a crisis going on right now. Let's take care of that. So, I mean, this really is something else because this, this flies directly in the face of the narrative that we're seeing now in Republican propaganda circles. You turn on Fox Business Network, you turn on Fox News Network, and I mean, they'll tell you this is a, you know, a crazy uh, left-wing idea, it's a Pelosi idea, it's a, it's a communist idea. Like I've seen Stuart Varney, we covered the segments of him bashing universal basic income. When the going gets really tough and the economy really is imploding, look at the reaction of the people. Even 52% of Republicans would tell Stuart Varney, hey man, piss off. I got bills I gotta pay. I lost my job through no fault of my own. We have a pandemic going on right now. We have unemployment that's reaching the same level of the Great Depression. And you want to do a segment with buzzwords where you play your little cutesy partisan game where you pretend like a UBI is a bad idea. No, it's a wonderful idea. It's a wonderful idea. And it's exactly why Andrew Yang's campaign for president, even though he ran as a Democrat, he was one of the campaigns that had the most crossover where Republicans or former Republicans said, I'm going to vote for that guy. I'm going to vote for that guy. Because it turns out UBI is not just an idea that the left likes. It's an idea that the right likes as well. Now, there are differences in, you know, exactly how those UBIs are crafted and implemented. Some on the right would say, I wanted to replace social programs. So there is a difference there between a right-wing UBI and a left-wing UBI. But bottom line is, it is popular, full stop. That's what all the numbers show. That's what all the evidence shows. It's definitely what we need right now. And if I were, you know, one of the Democrats in the House, if I was Nancy Pelosi, even though I know Nancy Pelosi doesn't really believe in it, have a vote on a clean UBI bill, pass it through the House, and then when the Republicans killed in the Senate and Trump wants to kill it, you go on a giant propaganda tour and say, but they're blocking the solution. We passed the solution. We're in favor of the solution, us House Democrats. Now, of course, I don't even know why I'm giving her this advice because we all know what would happen. Let's say the Democrats get a super majority and they get the presidency. It's not like Nancy Pelosi would pass a UBI, so it would be just a marketing proposal. But yeah, I mean... They should pass a UBI. If you got $5 trillion for corporations and the wealthy, don't tell me that we can't afford $2,000 per month for the rest of the crisis for regular people. Of course we can. And of course we should. And that's one of the few things that really is a solution during this terrible time. It's basically social security for everybody, which is a great idea. And clearly the people are behind it. 